Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update give or take on the models I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel and it's another one of those ones where it's quite an eclectic mix of a lot of different things. We have two boss miniatures going from left to right from Resident Evil the board game. We've got a fair chunk of scenery for Warcry, um, not as much as last time but uh, a fair amount, not, not even close to done but getting there um, and also Got some new stuff to talk about, about trying the Zenithal highlighting with different shades. So that will at least be a little bit different. Then we have a Warcry miniature slash Age of Sigmar. We have Blood Bowl. We have Batman the miniature game. And we have Warhammer Underworlds. And I guess also technically kind of slash Warcry as well. So a lot to get through. So in between dog throwing. Well, I'm not throwing the dog. I'm throwing things for the dog. Although sometimes she would encourage the, the latter. Either way, we'll get, <laughs> we'll get started. So let's talk about Neptune, the shark boss from Resident Evil the board game. If you have been following this series or, or just happened to watch the couple where I've painted various iterations of uh, King Shark from, is it Killer Shark? I'm blank, no, Killer Croc, King Shark, there we go. King Shark from various Batman related miniature games. Um, I basically just did the exact same thing I did for him. So it was good practice, if nothing else. But just to quickly go over that, if you aren't familiar, this is a contrast paint called Space Wolves Grey. It's actually a very, it's like grey with a hint of blue, which kind of fits it perfectly. Uh, just the base coat of grey sear for around his mouth. Inside his mouth is Volupus Pink, except for the black for like down into his throat. And then a, a healthy wash of, ooh, non oil, I think. It looks darker than Agrax. I think that was non oil. For the base, I did what I did for some water themed um, God tier bases back in the day. So it was Talisar blue, and then while it was damp, I mixed in a uh, Ultramarine's blue around the edge, which is a darker blue. Kind of deliberately, you know, waggled the paint as you apply it to try and create water-like effects. Sorry, I'm noticing a dog's hair there, and it's bothering me, but I can't get it. It might be stuck. Very fun miniature. Uh, just uh, black paint as well for his eyes, because he has soulless eyes. Uh, I'm not sure if those markers there on his skin is meant to be water, or if that's just part of his weird mutated skin because of a t-virus but i just opted to leave it skin tone just for ease because usually you're going to be looking at it from the the cool front angle or side angle here which is where it looks best in my opinion fun little miniature uh for plant 42 which that video's also gone live by the time you hear this the final big boss well, actually no not the final big boss there's still a giant spider paint from the expansions uh, it comes in two parts the head can actually come off for storage you saw the unboxing you'll know that i didn't fully finish painting this as i explained in the resident evil video where it appeared because i'm running out of uh agra surf shade and he's so large i didn't want to start in case i ran out because then it'd look weird with half of it shaded by a wash and half of it not so i didn't bother uh, i led to him being a bit brighter than how i genuinely like my models to look but it still looks okay and this is just a mixture of a yand and yellow Griffin orange towards the base. Um, ooh, which green is this? This is Mantis Warrior green and Mantis Warrior green with Biotan wash in the just the center here to darken it a little bit. I used Magus Purple, I think it's called, which is a contrast paint I'm just kind of getting used to for the plant type petal bits here. These are the bits that open up in the fight, I think. Um, and I also did them. I don't, I'm not sure if that's in focus, but I put some inside the bulbs here because they're what spray poison during the boss fight. And I, I like it as a blending contrast. I don't think it stands strong enough on its own unless you're doing super thin, like, veiny wings or something. Like, it, I think it might be good for vampire wings, very specifically. But if you're not blending it, I think it's not quite strong enough as a contrast paint. But if you are blending it, like I did here, blending it into the green and then doing a little wash on top, I actually think it creates that plant type coloration really well. Uh, probably the nicest part of this is that. And the giant pumpkin on top or whatever it's meant to be. I wasn't sure what color to make that. That's why I kind of settled on the end in yellow because that rides that line between yellow and orange. Um, I think a brown shade probably would have been a bit too far. But if I had done the wash over it, it would have darkened it down a smidge and really brought out the texture that the model has because this model is very well textured. And I think that would probably help. I'll, I'll probably still do that down the line just so I can call the model truly finished. But for now anyway, haven't quite done it. But I've still got the spider boss and the tyrant left to go. And that includes the base box and all expansions. 
and then that'll be done. Although I am going to have to prioritise painting up some hunters. I, I think I'm actually at the point now where I need them. So let's talk about some scenery, but we'll get out of the way the stuff that is using the same style of shading that I spent way too long the last time talking about trying out Zenithal highlighting with spray paint for the first time using the um, turquoise satin and the cardinal red. Did the same here for this piece, although the difference with these bits of scenery, that's why I did them last, is because they had a lot of parts which were not the stone texture, they're, they're just wood. So I just used a lot of snake bite leather for these, which is hopefully focusing a little bit. Skeletal Horde for any and all skelly men, and Lid Belcher Silver with a wash over top for the, the spikes on the, on the tips. And these are purely just snake by leather. They're just a couple of walkways that you can use to customize your scenery in Warcry, make some bridges that are sturdy enough for models to walk across. Super simple, didn't do anything fancy with them at all. Actually, I did do something fancy with one of them, I totally forgot about that. I added, I added a little bit of blood for character. Just, just a little bit of blood for the Blood God just to imply that there's already been a fight there at some point while it was still damp because that's the best way to apply that paint in my opinion it really gives it that oily blood texture uh, it's already got the colour down but I, I think it adds to it if you do that it really seeps into like the, the creases in the scenery so that's just a couple of walkway bridges super simple just getting that done working through the scenery that's in the catacombs warcry box this bit of scenery before we talk about the new stuff again had a lot of parts of it that were not just the cold stone. Had the big bronze bell, or gold bell as I decided to paint it. A couple of skeletons. It is supposed to have one of those on each side. Uh, it's attached via, oh, you can't quite see. It's attached to the uh, the rest of it from those little side bits, the awnings, whatever you want to call them. But while I was coating them, the one on this side just snapped off. And it's such a tiny, tiny connector point. Um, let's pull back a little bit, there we go. It's such a tiny, tiny connector point. It's just like, I'm not gonna get that back on there and hold it on there, so it's not gonna have one on that side. Now I did notice, because I'm using um, paint with sealant in it, which is what the Cardinal Red and the Turquoise Satin by whatever brand it was, forgotten again, but I mentioned it last time and I went and double checked to make sure I had the right brand. It's got sealant in it, so when I then wanted to base coat the stairs, the walkway, you know, the ladder, the bell, um, with grey sear again so I could paint them. I, it was having that same problem that Modifius Resin has for contrast paint where paint doesn't stick to it no matter how much you wash it. So I knew that was going to happen in this case because it's like anti-rust spray paint that I've been using so of course it has sealant in it to protect the surface. Of course it does, that's what it's for. Which leads me to believe that Modifius treats their resin because their resin is very shiny and very very reflective so they must be treating it with some type of sealant. I don't know why uh, I, I don't, other resin doesn't do that or people don't do that with their resin I should say but that must be what they're doing because it created the exact same effect here where I was really struggling to get the base coat to stay on and I was really struggling to get the contrast to stay on which is why there's splotches missing in certain places because it's just scenery I'm not too fussed and I still like the effect of the spray paint itself uh, but you can really tell in the skeletons like the, the skeletal horror just was not sticking to them <laughs> at all around here so you can still see the blue it kind of adds mood lighting I guess and as I say, I'm not too fussed. It's very nice looking scenery and the Xenophil shading between the red and the turquoise I think is the standout part so you won't really care too much if you spot a little bit of like the turquoise poking through the wood. It's like who cares? The rest of it looks not too bad. That's just Nazrag yellow for the bell with Agrazor shade to pick out the, the lettering and the whatever that is on the front, the symbol on the front. So that is it in terms of like the really big bits of scenery that come in the Catacombs Warcry box set which is an old set. Um, what's left is a bunch of doors and a bunch of interior scenery which is what we're going to talk about next one throw later. So I mentioned last time that I wanted to experiment with more Xenithal shading and specifically I wanted to experiment with grey at an angle on top of black. So that's what I did here, finished these off earlier today as it happens. I spray painted them in Games Workshop uh, Chaos Black, I think their spray is called, maybe called Bad and Black now, it's an old spray I've got, I've not very much of it left. So I did it all in black, which you can, oh I didn't spray the bombs, but pitch black, covered every part of them, and then angled their Basilicanum Grey, or it's, I can't remember if that's what their Imperium Grey, their standard grey spray paint, angled it, sprayed that after the black had dried to get that Zenithal look. Um, I don't think I was far enough away quite 
Uh, I think it, with hindsight it would have been a bit further away to make it go a bit lighter. The effect is actually pretty nice, in my opinion. It's not as standout-ish as the other effect, just because there is such a contra contrast between that cardinal red and turquoise satin. Whereas, you know, grey and black aren't a million miles from each other, so the effect isn't as e easy to tell. But in terms of just being a bit of scenery around a, a cave, I actually think it stands out reasonably, it stands out enough. Not too much, not too little, just, just right. I did do a little bit of a dry brushing of Ulthwin Grey, just to try and make the edges stand out a bit more. I think I was a bit heavy handed on this particular piece, but just to add that little bit of definition to the edges, and then I used Skeletal Hard for the the various bones. They love putting like little bones and skulls on these bits of scenery. So it turned out well enough, and again, super fast for these little bits of scenery as well. Just destroyed pillars. I, I used some Basilicanum Grey for the metal. Why would those be on there? <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, it's not a door, so why would it have those like chapper things or things to pull? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, Either way, especially because presumably that's the right way up. Hmm. Either way, it's for a show, I'm sure. This one was quite fun, and because I was using just standard Games Workshop sprays, they don't have the sealant in them, so I could easily go over them with Grey Seer afterward and use contrast paint to pick out the detail I wanted. Uh, I did the, the fencing here in the exact same way I talked about last time for the bigger bits of scenery, but... Uh, Skeletal Horde for the two skeletons, Basilicanum Grey, Snakebite Leather, and it just looks a little bit nicer because I could go over the top of the spray afterwards. And it's just a nice bit of scenery, honestly. I'm not sure if that's in focus if I come much closer, but I actually really like how this little bit of scenery looks. It's so simple, but I just, I just like it. So as far as the experiment goes with the grey on black Zenithal style, I'm okay with it. Especially if you do the dry brush afterwards to just pick out edges or I kind of went a bit OTT on this one as well, to be honest, but I kind of like that effect on the rock there. Like you can tell where the greys streaked a little bit too much, but I actually kind of like that. So I'll absolutely be using that. There's no more big bits of scenery to do, as I say. There's about a dozen doorways of various types. I'm just, I've got the pile around here somewhere, but I can't quite see it. And a few more little bits of like spikes um, and a couple of walls with like shields on them and stuff. Nothing super huge, but yeah, well, absolutely, as long as I don't run out of black spray paint, I'm just going to do this for all the interior stuff, and I'm going to stick with that, this colour scheme up here for anything that I deem as kind of like outside scenery. Works super well, super fast, and if I can do it, anyone can, because I'm not good at this stuff, so if you're looking at it thinking, I can't do zenithal shading, you absolutely can. It's very, very easy, even if you make a little bit of a mistake of being a bit too close, just back up a little bit as you do this, the spray at an angle. Just remember you're doing it at an angle where you're imagining the sun coming in from, because that's what highlights, and then you've got the shadow below. Uh, I'm still not confident enough to consistently use it on models, but as far as big scenery, it's going to be my go-to method from here on out for sure. So as a matter of note, you will already have seen whether you watched the video or not, but Blood Bowl did return to the channel in the form of Sivens, the smaller, more compact, much easier to film and edit and render and upload version of a Blood Bowl. And I wanted to run my Imperial Nobility that I've been painting steadily over like 17 months. But to run a full Sivens team that was legal, I had to paint up one more lineman. So I did so. Uh, exactly the same as the last one of these. There's three lineman sculpts, so you get two of each as standard in Blood Bowl teams. So I've already shown this lady off before. The difference is I painted her blonde, but other than that, I did exactly the same thing as I did for the other one and all the other Boken Half and Barons. So if you are curious about this colour scheme and the paintings used, just go back in the series to find when I painted up the first ones. I went into detail about all the colours I used for her. But that gave me a Lego 7s team. And 7s in general, I didn't like it when I, I went looking for it. And I, I, I like full scale Blood Bowl. I, I do. I don't like it from a filming perspective. It takes too long and editing is a nightmare. And the last full match I did, I ran into so many technical problems, it put me off. So that's what actually spurred me to give 7s a try. You can do a game in an hour, just over an hour, and it lets you uh, get on with it and get down to dirty, or down to the dirty rather, because when you start losing players in a sevens match, it gets real nasty. <laughs> um, not to spoil the next match that will be up soon. So it's pretty, it's it's different, maybe too different, but it's um, I'm interested to see what kind of reception it gets, and it, as I say, if it's a good reception, I'll absolutely play more sevens for the channel, even if it's not my preferred Blood Bowl style, 
because that way it can come to the channel more than literally once or twice a year. Because I last played it in February or March and the nightmare of editing that video put me off so much I hadn't played it since. So this is the way to bring it back. It would suck from a perspective of well, you're not getting the full experience obviously I've not seen two 11 aside teams fight each other at 7 on 7. Um, limitations with the pitch because there's only one official 7's pitch so you don't get to see all the fancy ones and you don't get to see the full balance of a team because you are limited by the rules of 7's. But I'm, not, I'm talking it down but I am, I'm, I'm surprised how much I did end up liking it. Not just from a filming perspective so check it out if you haven't. So related to Warcry, but technically available for Age of Sigmar, this is a Vampire Lord, who is a model I actually quite like. I remember when this model first got revealed a few years back now. And I picked this one up because this model, plus what I already have painted from the old uh, Warhammer Curse City box, which is not a good game for the record. Curse City is a massive disappointment, or was, I should say. The uh, Blackstone Fortress is much better. But if I use the, the what are they called, the Soul Blight? whatever they're called, the undead vampire people from that box. I've forgotten what they're called in Sigmar these days, the vampires. With this as their leader, it's actually a straight up usable Warcry warband of a thousand renown. So this was the only addition I needed. And thanks to being able to use Warhammer Underworld's warbands in Warcry, painting up a couple more Nurgle related things will mean I can actually field a Nurgle warband as well. And that means we can maybe bring a little test game of Warcry to the channel relatively soon. My goal is to get it on the channel at least once before the new year to see how it goes. But anyway, specifically this model. Used uh, Black Templar, first of all. Then a little bit of a edge highlighting, as if it can be called that. I'm not very good at edge highlighting. With the Fang, which is a Citadel paint. I used... Um, I didn't use Agrat Sorshade to, to make the shield and the mace rusty. I think I used rattling grime like a really watered down rattling grime because i wanted to test how it looked and i think i did yeah I, i'm pretty sure that's what i did and i'm, I'm okay with the effect i think agrat's earth would have done just as well for the record but as i say my supply was running a little low for his or her hair i did not use a color i've used before on camera i think I, it's called mag magdroth red or magdroth flame i think it's one of the newer range citadel contrast paints Kind of a, a warmish red. It's more orange than I was expecting, and honestly, it's so close to Griffhound orange. I'm not really seeing much of a difference. It's like a, a touch more red than Griffhound orange. It's really, really similar. Um, I used Bal Red for the the shield, and then tried to do some edge highlighting with one of the old orange Citadel paints. I forget the name of it offhand. I think it's named after those monkey things. And for the base, I did what I did for the Crimson Court for Warhammer Underworlds just so that they match up because they can also be teamed up with them for the record so it's actually pretty easy if you've got the Crimson Court if you've got Curse City you probably wouldn't need her actually you could probably uh, run the Crimson Court's Duval as your leader I'm not 100% sure that's possible but I would think so so it's super easy if you have those boxes to just cross play and suddenly have a, a playable warband for Warcry for the bats I did the same thing as her armour and I think that about covers it for her. Um, I wasn't too happy with how the, the, the shield was frustrating me to no end, that's why I kind of just dived in to try and do the edge highlighting to try and save it a little bit. I don't think it looks that great but, oh and I used Flesh Terror Red for the interior of the shield as well. But it looks okay, I think. And one step closer with this being finished. Oh, for her base, I can't remember if I mentioned this when I was doing the Crimson Court or anything else last time, but I used the concrete texture paint by the same people who did the, the Plague World one I've been talking about the past couple of videos, and then I just went over it with Stormfiend Blue, and that's what creates that kind of night effect, and then just stuck on a couple of tufts. The tufts don't really match the lighting, I'm not 100% sure I like them, but just running with that. And uh, yeah, I think that covers it. So I'll be concentrating on getting a couple of Nurgle things done next time, no doubt. So very quickly, as a matter of note, we have the gas puppets from the Batman miniature game, which are for the Joker crew. However, in a recent update to the app, the gas puppets got a variant of themselves using these same miniatures, uh, I think called the Infected Who Laugh, which are just like trash five rep mobs you can bring in your Batman Who Laughs team. And they're just there for filler. They've got the hard rules, so you can have like nine of them for very little rep. 
although I only have the three here. So I decided to pick up this little box just because I've, they've got that dual purpose. They can be used in Joker Crew, they can be used in Batman Who Laughs Teams. And in the latter, they actually have a special rule where, like, if they put down a suspect marker, they just get deleted. But the Batman Who Laughs, not to get too into the, the rules of the video game, if he kills people, he can bring back models that have on, on his site as freed people. That's what they're called. So, for this lady, I think I used another new contrast paint for her colours on her dress. Wait, no, this is the Sigurd Bur Burgundy, I think, isn't it? Hmm, I might flash it up on the screen if it wasn't that. I'm going to have to go look. I'm, I'm trying to dabble in a few more new contrast paints. And I think this is one of them, but I don't quite remember. Beyond that, the end in yellow for her hair. I just used Bal Red to pick out the Joker uh, lips. And some Mantis, uh, yeah, Mantis Warrior Green to put, uh, pick out her infected eyes. Her skin tone, and this goes for all of them, is just the base coat grey sear with non-oil over the top and a little bit of green on the muscly guy here to pick out his veins that are filled with some form of Joker poison or Batman Who Laughs poison, who knows. And that was uh, Blood Angel Dread, I think, for his shorts. But beyond that, not much to say about them. They're fun models. I like this one that's leaping over a wall, although it was murder to get stuck on. <coughs> He has like a checkered shirt. I, I tried my best. I don't really have anything else to say about it. His trousers are rattling grime. The wall is a mixture of Basilicanum Grey, Agrax Silver Shade, and Griffin Orange. Griffin Orange with Agrax Silver Shade on top of it gets super, super dark. Actually, I think I might have done that on top of the grey to, to get that as, as dark as it looks. And that's actually a really nice looking brick colour. I'm going to do that in the future, I think, if I ever need to do a, a dank brick wall. Doing that Griffin Orange on top of grey, the Niagara on top, darkens it down to the, a realistic shade of orange for brickwork, I feel. For grimy Gotham City brickwork, just to be clear. But yeah, not much else to say about them. Um, they'll pop up at some point in the future. Last but not least, hot off the press for Warhammer Underworld, and I guess also probably technically Warhammer um, Warcry is two of the Wood Elves, and I don't remember their names, they're called like Anaris something or other. It's a very old warband that I managed to pick up cheap, and cheapish, on eBay a little while back. Uh, I didn't realise at the time they don't come with a full Rivals deck, they're short two objective cards, so you have to use a Nemesis deck set up for them, which just means you, you customise your deck, you don't use a set deck. Uh, but first time trying to paint up Wood Elves as they appear now, in modern day uh, Age of Sigmar type settings, it was fun. I actually quite had uh, quite liked how I came up with this. So I used Rattling Grime for the wood effect for them, and then I used a mixture of Mantis Warrior Green, Warp Lightning, and there is a third one, Striking Scorpion Green. There we go, blending in for the tree bits on them. For their ghostly apparition parts that are coming out of the living wood, I used can't remember if it's Briar Queen Chill. That's the one I always remember because it's got a fun name, Briar Queen Chill. But if that's the green tone one not the blue tone one I'm talking about the blue tone one which I'll flash up on the screen here if I'm misremembering but I did that and then over the top I used a different green wash it's a very slight green wash meant for night haunts it's not biotan green it begins with a C I'll flash that up as well because I don't remember the name offhand I've been using that kind of experimenting for night haunts as well and that gave some definition and more you know more depth to their their ghostly parts and they're just very fun models in general. There's four in the warband. I'm halfway through painting the third. It's sitting on the table right now. So we'll hopefully see those last two completed next time. This one's quite fun. Um, not much to say about him again. Exact same colours I was talking about. I, I tried to match up the official paint job. This wood on the official paint job gets lighter as it goes down. I actually don't like how it turned out. I wish I'd just stuck with rattling ground for the whole thing. But, you know, hindsight is 2020. I might try and go over it. I think there's something stuck to it, actually. I'll look into that off camera but either way that's how I've chosen to do my wood elves and I do have some more of them with uh, I don't remember the names of them all these new age of sigma names they pass me by so I've got to get used to them all um, but that is going to allow me to hopefully also field a warband for warcry with very few additions on top of these so we'll definitely see and I just I, I like the wood elf effect aesthetic rather in general with hindsight now that Rattling Grime is a thing that existed, before Rattling Grime existed as a, a thing, I painted up a tree man for our Blood Bowl. I think I just used Snake Bite Leather, I can't quite remember now, but I probably just used that or Wildwood. I wish, in hindsight, 
I'd obviously not done that until Rattling Ground was available. It's a lovely shade of brown for that type of thing that allows you to build on it if you had more talent <laughs> than I do, I think. So I, I, I regret not having Rattling Ground, although in my defence it didn't exist at the point I painted them. So I've successfully moved the cluster of everything I've painted over onto the left, so that's a little bit awkward, but that is going to do it for another Getting Stuff Painted. And, and next time I'm hoping, as I say, to have the last two of that warband done. I am hoping to paint up a couple of hunters at the very least for Resident Evil the board game. Um, I've got a little bit more of some grayscale stuff I want to paint for Warcry or I'll get started on the doors. I'm not 100% sure how I want to do those doors yet. I might just do this as well but I'm worried about running out of spray paint. Uh, definitely some more Blood Bowl because if the Sevens format takes off that will mean I could actually paint up. Like, I have a couple of boxes sitting that are from pre second season of older teams that I could just paint up seven miniatures from relatively quickly and be able to have some more variety on, on what's on offer. Uh, I have a, a, a Battletech mech in progress as well, a Marauder, so that might show up next time. And beyond that, I don't know, we'll have to see. The dog is now getting impatient for attention, so, and I've probably been rambling way too long as per usual. <laughs> I have a habit of turning these into vlogs. Thank you for watching though, I hope they inspired you to get through your pile of grey shame. If, if you have any questions, by all means ask away. And if you want to show me what you've been painting and still use Twitter, you can uh, you can tweet at me for as long as I have an account left on there. Uh, probably not much longer, but I'll consider going somewhere else after that just so I can put, put uh, photos of minis I paint every so often. I'm considering getting Instagram, but I'm not 100% set on that. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully see you in about two weeks for another update. Ta-da for now.